shall turn on them in droves and destroy those who are the prophets of Baal, who have been the mouthpieces for the enemy and the serpent to go forth and deceive the people to take what is not capital of me. Adam and Eve were my capital children, yet they hearkened unto the serpent, says the Lord. And many of my capital children have done so in this time. Repent, and that's capitalized. Turn completely back to me, the Lord your God, and serve me the rest of your days. And I shall deliver you from the pestilence that has been brought upon you, the snare that was injected into you, the manipulation of the molecules and DNA I created, says the Lord. As it was in the days of Noah, in quotation, says the Lord, except the enemy has reversed the dialogue and raised up, quote, Noah's to speak in favor of with convincing, lulling words that touching the DNA God created and doing a, quote, edit and edit is the future. And then in all capitals, he says, my work, says the Lord, they dare to edit my work my creation they are as dust in my sight and soon one major influence in that world shall be no more for tragedy shall strike since they chose to sow death and deception into others their word shall now befall them and it shall shake that order says the lord not one death but two says the lord repent now repent and then he switches gears here and says the spirit of the Lord this day, there is a discovery coming with Alzheimer's where a sequence shall be discovered that will not only stop the advancement of this pestilence, but capital, it shall reverse the damage and restore those areas of the brain, shall turn back the clock for many. This will be worldwide news. It will be such an incredible discovery. And I, the Lord, am putting it in the hands of those seeking me. That's capitalized for an answer. You scientists who know me, who are searching, seek me, that's capitalized, with all your heart, and I shall give you the vision to the code that will help heal so many, says the Lord thy God this day. I am the Lord your God, serve me, that's capitalized, not man. It is not a man who will save you, O America, for the wicked are racing, and as Elijah was given a cake of supernatural means to beat Ahab's chariot. So my children, you need a supernatural touch from me to finish this race before the wicked do, and that's capitalized. For the wicked are jumping steps that shall be their downfall, says the Lord. Know this day you serve an awesome God who can do exceedingly abundantly above what you could ever, that's capitalized, ask or think. My desire is to save America. The world is watching, dot, dot, dot. Other leaders of other nations in covenant, yes, I said in covenant with the wicked of your nation, are watching. For if the wicked do not prevail, these leaders of other nations will fall suddenly as well, as their use is up and they know too much. Hearken unto my voice, that's capitalized, for the enemy has flooded the airways with voices who sound good. However, that's capitalized. In the details of what they are saying are lies and purposeful misinformation, even being pumped out by those in the military to these voices to send the people on wild goose chases or to get their eyes on a man. Do not, that's capitalized, make the mistake Israel made. People of America, do not shout that you want a king and to be like the other pagan nations of the world. Do not, that's capitalized, look to crown anyone and raise yourself up a king. I, the Lord, am your leader in this, and I appoint whom I please, no matter what the prognosticators, placators, forecasters may say. I, the Lord, choose whom I please. Do not, that's capitalized, put your hope in a man right now, for you will be disappointed, says the Lord. Put your hope in me, that's capitalized, and I shall give you living water that shall sustain you during this time. The weariness and tiredness, much of it, and the hopelessness is from putting your hope in a man. There is a mantle who rests upon more than one man I have appointed for high leadership in this land. Watch what happens in the political arena, for there will be a lot of flips, that's capitalized, says the Lord. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, the earth shall once again be shaken, says the Lord, in various ways. The political arena shall be shaken and sifted and then tilled, says the Lord of hosts, for the new seed and leadership that is being planted and sown. There is a preparation process that is occurring, for I am preparing the people of this nation for what is about to occur. 
Do not put your hope in a man, people of America. Do not put all your eggs in one basket as the saying so goes. That's all capitalized. For there shall be disappointment if you do. For your hope is in the Lord your God and what I have ruled and intend to carry out. For I, the Lord thy God, am holy and perfect in my ways. And what perplexes you, my children, that's capitalized, I see far ahead of such. And for that reason, when you put your hope in me, that's also capitalized, the Lord of hosts, you shall not be disappointed. For then my will, that's capitalized, is carried out, and you shall see a redemption of your nation that is teetering on the verge of bankruptcy in many ways. I am abruptly snatching you away from that, yes, teetering on the cliff that leads to the abyss that the serpent of old, the devil and his accomplices, have so created for their wicked purposes. However, I have gone out after you as a shepherd so pursues their lost sheep and America. I am snatching you from that tomb, says the Lord. I am abruptly snatching you away from that ledge. That sudden snatching by force shall be felt across your nation as I, the Lord thy God, am turning the narrative. I am turning on those who have had their finger out, pointing and accusing and spewing everything vile from their mouths, all being led by the flesh. Their herds shall turn on each other and produce the same vile accusations against thy neighbor who has conspired with them to sow confusion and muddiness into the airwaves, into the radio waves, into the church, says the Lord. And says the Lord of hosts, this is all capitals. I am a God of mercy. I am a God of vengeance. And I, the Lord, am taking mercy upon my people, for I am crowning them with loving kindness and tender mercies. And I, the Lord, shall bring forth the vengeance against those in this hour who have attempted to harm my servants and smear their names. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And in this hour, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies and those who have persecuted you. In this hour, I am breaking bad habits that have become a snare for the lives of many have veered and have gone off in directions that have sent them into a dark forest that have sent them into habits that the enemy is utilizing in this hour to spiritually dull them. However, I, the Lord, am sharpening my people in this hour. Get ready, says the Lord, for this is going to be an intense growth spurt. And you shall be sharpened and fashioned how I, the Lord, have decreed. For you are being raised up into higher positions, my capital children. Those who have continued to walk with me, that's capitalized, and not attempt to get ahead by forcing doors open and squeezing their way into things that they are not ready for, says the Lord. That shall be rectified in this hour. And says the Lord of hosts, a strange occurrence in Antarctica. That's all he says about that. The Hunger Games in Hollywood, disaster, says the Lord. Disaster is imminent. Now, I think that has a double meaning. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, the speakers shall be silenced in this hour. The speakers that have promoted the serpent, that have held the gavel, that have gone forth in complete arrogance of heart shall be silenced. There shall be an unprecedented event that occurs in the Supreme Court from what is transpiring, for the picture is changing. A major shift that will force out those who have conspired in secret. What they have planned, now planned is capitalized for a reason, shall not prosper, and it shall turn on them and cause enormous financial loss and loss of influence. Planned parenthood, says the Lord, just watch. Watch the heads and watch what happens. Watch the events transpiring in Texas and the governor. A doozy indeed the people shall see. And this is where he ends, and this is all capitals, this paragraph. I am God, there is no other. Put your hope and trust in me. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you, for I love you, my children. Every hair is numbered. Brace yourself, put on the whole armor of God and stand in your faith as you shall see much change in a whirlwind of events in your lives and the nation. A double touchdown of whirlwinds, twin whirlwinds. Just watch, says the Lord. For I shall have my way, and men shall know it is I, the Lord thy God, who have done these awesome things. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in the name of Yeshua, my son, your Savior, who sits at my capital right hand. Amen and amen. And that's where it ends. Wow. There is so many places we're going to go, just, just so yeah. you know. <laughs> because the Lord gave it to me and I read it. I was like, oh my goodness. It puts the fear of God in you. It really does. Very yes, fast. it does. Okay. Yes. So let's, let's go back to the beginning. 
of the Lazarus okay. moment where many times through this word, I think it's interesting. Uh, the Lord spoke to you about as in the days of Noah. And so in, mm -hmm. in all of that, we know um, Matthew 24, 37 through 39, Jesus talks about as in the days of Noah, you know, they will be marrying, they will be given in marriage, they'll be living their lives. And then like in the days of Noah, the flood came and swept them away in judgment. But Noah and his family were saved because of the righteousness on their lives. And if we go back to Genesis 6, we see what was it like in the days of Noah? Because many people, when the Lord talks about that, there's a reason, there's a background and a history of why Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, be like before the coming of the Son of Man. Because in Genesis 6, we know that um, the watchers came down, they took women to themselves, sons of God took the yes. daughters mm -hmm. of man to themselves, they begot Nephilim or giants, and the seed was corrupted. The DNA was corrupted because it was hybrid. It mm -hmm. was no longer human. Once they commingled, it was no longer redeemable. Um, it wasn't made in the image of God anymore, um, what they were having. And, and, and then they were mixing with each other. And in Genesis 6, it talks about not one, not one um, thought or one part of their imagination was clean. It was all completely corrupt before the flood. So we think about, okay, what's going on now with the corrupt thoughts of what we're seeing in the earth right now, the, de the level of deception, the altering, the things that are altering or wanting to alter DNA, mm -hmm. wanting to change uh, what's, what's going on with you. And so you're no longer made in the image of God because you've now been altered or changed genetically. Um, we know there's something called CRISPR that is actually changing the genetic makeup of who you are. And so all these things mm -hmm. are coming out. And so we can't be ignorant of the devices yeah. of the devil because it's the same strategy before the coming of Jesus to corrupt man. So they're not made in the image of God. So let's talk about that. That's right. And here, I'm going to get something real quick to show you. So, so it ties into what I'm talking about here. It's over here on the bookshelf. So here. Okay, this was a gift given to me. It's a 1633 King James Bible. Wow. So it was transcribed in 1611. And when you open it up here to the beginning, it's very interesting what it has, but it's got all the books and the Apocrypha is in here with the rest of the books. Mm -hmm. So this happens to be where it was still together. Uh, and the book of Jasher is in that. And in the book of Jasher, especially in chapter four, it, it kind of enhances our understanding of what happened. And what happened was also is that they started genetically mixing animals yes. and mating animals and intermating them genetically and, yes. and, and corrupting everything genetically that God had made pure was now being corrupted. They also, which was interesting, gave their women some sort of drink or something that kept them from getting pregnant because they wanted them to keep their forms. So that was something else that was going on at the time. Yep. So there was true genetic manipulation on multiple fronts yep. during the time before the flood came. Uh, and so I find that interesting that it goes into detail, but that was the reason for the flood. Yeah, That is what triggered it. And so you're seeing them try to take it a step further. And I'll tell you what's interesting. First of all, the first great reset already was attempted at the Garden of Eden at the tree. When the enemy attempted to just completely reset uh, what God had created and reset yeah. it the way he wanted it. Right. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I would say is, you know, they talk about humans and I'm just going to say this being hackable animals. I won't say the name of who it is, but he has no in his name. And I hate to burst their bubble, but the enemy hacked into them a long time ago and has been using them for his purposes for a very long time. So yes. they want to talk about that way. They were hacked a long time ago by the enemy and all they are are his puppets right now. And I hate to break the news to them, but this is what's going on. And right. more and more, they want to play God. Yes. They want to play God. They want to be like God. They want to build Babel and go up and challenge God. And it didn't end well for Babel and it's not going to end well for them. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, well, you, you know, know the, the big thing is that in all of 
all of the history that we know, we have not, except yeah. for in the days of Noah, except for through biblical history, we have never seen this level of blatant, outright um, antichrist spirit manifesting on the earth um, because it's, yeah. it's just out there and it's in the open. And we're telling you that, you know, um, well, we can talk about transhumanism, about how they're going to uh, change you to where you're not in the image of God. And I mean, where I'm going to quote the same person that you just quoted talking about um, that, you know, he, he said, Jesus Christ is fake news. And he talked about how saying God has created man, but we now can create better than God has created because we're mixing artificial intelligence and human beings. And, and, you know, you no longer have a free will and all of this stuff. I mean, it's, it's out in the open. It is the Antichrist spirit um, agenda to do the same thing that he has done before. And we have to talk about this because if we don't talk about this and the truth of what the Bible says about it, then you're going to be easily deceived because they come off saying stuff like, oh, well, this is for your good. This is going to help you because it's going to, you know, if you're sick, it's going to heal you. If you know, you need, you're going to download your brain into the cloud and you're going to know everything. You're going to know languages. You're going to know all this. They're teaching all of this. Like it's some good thing, but we know that it's the antichrist spirit. Well, yes. And if we could put it into uh, a couple of examples, first of all, I think they jumped the gun. So I'm going to say that I think the enemy went a little too full throttle ahead and tried to get ahead of the times and seasons of God and change the cycle and get ahead of the clock and try to manipulate things. And I think he's going to be knocked back on as you know what, uh, you know yeah. what I mean? To where he should be along with his cohort. So I think the Lord is going right. to um, do his own breaking and then reset it the way it, you know what I mean? Back to where it should be in order because right. God has a schedule and they're not going to get ahead of his schedule. They can try. Babel tried to get ahead of God's schedule and they thought and imagined yes. they were going to climb to heaven and, and uh, shoot arrows at God and they were going to attack him and they were going to do this. And, and you know, in one and just in one moment, God just completely dismantled their plans. You know what I yes. mean? Just it was it was almost effortless on God's part. He just dismantled them. So they don't realize the being they're dealing with here. They're so right. deceived. They don't realize the being they have come up against because Luce, you yes. see, Lucifer tries to get people one of a few ways. So if he can't get you the occult route, the, you know what I mean? Serving the yeah. kingdom of darkness in that way route, what he's going to do is he's going to go another route. He's going to convince you God isn't real. And he's going to convince you he's not real. Yes. And he's going to manipulate you, rewire you, and then he's going to flip a switch and he's going to use you in that capacity because he knows he can't get everybody one way. So he's got right. multiple ways and avenues of trying to get somebody. Um, some of them is just getting them to be totally lackadaisical. They don't serve God at all. And that's the only way he can get them because he can't get them to go through the other two phases. Right. And, you know, if we look at it like chocolate cake, right? So chocolate cake, it is delicious, right? And it's yummy, but it's also filled with sugar and it's not good for you. Right. And anybody that tries to convince you that chocolate cake is good for you is lying. Right. You know, that's something have in, in you know very in moderation they're supposed to have it but anyone that convinces you you can consume large quantities of chocolate cake and you're not going to register diabetic on your blood work and you know what i mean your your liver is going to be fine and you know your your everything else in your system is going to run great is lying right and this is what they're doing they're trying to feed the world what looks like a big beautiful chocolate cake right now and saying oh it's fine it's good for you it's not going to hurt you right but really it's very damaging. Right. If I can put it into a visual for everybody, this is what they're trying to do right now. They're, they're calling wrong, right, and right, wrong. Right. Is what yes. they're doing. And, you know, Jesus Christ is the good news. He's not the fake news. And if that That's isn't a line right. from the enemy, the serpent, I don't know what is. Because that just sounds like him all over the place. And right. they really think they're above everyone. You know, uh, uh, Klaus, uh, the, the guy named Klaus, I'm not going to say his last name, but you know who I'm talking about. Um, he talked about uh, how the world has billions of useless eaters. Right. Well, who crowned him king to say that? You know what I mean? It's kind of like who crowned him king and just, you know, he could just 
do what he wants. So you're seeing this and you're seeing this, the spirit of lawlessness yes. take hold where they don't want to submit to laws. They don't want to follow laws. They don't want to follow laws of nature. God has put in place. They don't want to follow laws of physics. They don't, they want to try to make their own law. And I'll tell you something very interesting. There was a man by the name of Alester Crowley, one of the most wicked men that ever lived. Yeah. And he had a saying, and it was, do what thou wilt will be the whole of the law. Do whatever you want, and that's the law. That is anarchy and chaos, yeah. and that's not God's order and what he created. Because yeah. God yeah. did not say, well, do whatever you want, and, and it's fine. But that's yeah. what the enemy does to overindulge you, to get you into things that then pull you away from God. Yes. And we have to remember that this is a spiritual battle. And so mm -hmm. we go back into uh, the days of Noah where the, there was, uh, the whole world was flooded. And so the Nephilim spirits, you know, demons, people always wonder, well, what are demons? Well, they're disembodied mm -hmm. spirits that roam the earth mm -hmm. that were the Nephilim. So they were the giants. They were the spirits living in that day. They're still roaming the earth. They're cursed. They don't have a body. So they want your body. They want to use you. They want to they fulfill want to what they were doing in the days of Noah. They want to use your body to do that. And so when we see these wicked people doing as in the days of Noah, well, what what is the spiritual uh, thing behind that? Well, I can tell you right now, it's the disembodied spirits doing the same things that they did then. They're doing now. They've been They've been trying to find you and thousands can we know through Jesus cast out a legion of the man and, you know, into the pigs. And so there can be many in one person. So we wonder how can people be so wicked? How can they have? Well, this is why, because it's a spiritual battle that we're fighting. So let's talk a little bit about um, what what demons, why they want to enter you and what they want to do through you, especially because um, we're seeing it open out and in the open now. It's no longer yeah. hiding. Yeah, actually, we have done many times, me and Pastor Coconado, at the prayer and baptisms that we do um, oh, at every Pastor week. I love Pastor Coconado. I love Pastor Coconado. He's like my Italian paisan, that man. And so basically, <laughs> we do we do deliverance together. Right there. Oh, awesome. What we start, when he's able to come, we, we, we tag team and we go, here we go. And we do it because it's, it's very real what goes on. And I'll tell you a few things. Uh, for example, to, to pull a biblical example, Jezebel. Mm -hmm. Okay. High priestess of Baal. Political marriage. Whole deal. That spirit that was in her was alive long before her. It found her as a host to carry out its will. Its will, yeah. not God's will. And right. when she died, that spirit moved on. Yes. It didn't just go away. It, it just didn't disappear. That spirit moved on to try to find another host. And right. so many times the, what the enemy will do, because the enemy knows a few things. He knows as adults get older, they get set in their ways. And so the best way for him to enter is to start to break people as children. And to, wow. to create broken children that then give him a door to create very broken, fractured in their soul adults. So many times when children don't, this is why it's so important for parents to protect their children. Because children, like little Archie back here, perfect example. Where is he? Oh, he's, I don't know, he's playing with a toy over there. Um, chill, what does he have? Oh, excuse me, sir. He's still a bird toy. He's still a bird toy. Speaking of, this is a perfect bleeding. So, <laughs> speaking of little children, <laughs> exhibit A back there. Moses has no defenses. Moses mm -hmm. could not defend himself. He could try to run, but he's small. And yeah. he doesn't have his wits about him yet to understand what a predator is. This is why it's so important for a shepherd to watch over their sheep because you are their guardian. You are the watchman. You are seeing what's coming before it happens. You can see the danger coming. So he's got no defenses. So it'd be very easy if there wasn't somebody watching him for a predator yeah. to attack him. 
And the same thing with children. Children have very little defenses. They don't understand about spiritual warfare. They don't understand until they get a little older about using the name of Jesus. They know how to pray to the name of Jesus. And, and some parents do teach their children young to rebuke in the name of Jesus and to call on that name. But many times they don't understand the fullness of the enemy's devices and how crafty he can be and how he attempts to push it through Disney and he attempts to push it through cartoons yeah. and he attempts to push it through music. I mean, that was the gift yeah. God gave Lucifer and he fell and built a whole wicked empire off of it, all yeah. in order to open doors to people's souls and pick their locks in order to get things in and begin things to take root there. So he starts working on them when they're children and the parents are ignorant of what he's doing. Yes. And many times generational things set children up for this. You see these yes. generational habits and the that, that is not broken. And then the parent brings the child into it. And now the child is growing yes. up and they're thinking it's normal. And it's the farthest thing from normal possible. And it begins yes. to do a number on their soul, their mind, and their spirit. And that's when the enemy and their brokenness as children can come to them and say, well, you know, if you want to feel better. You can do this. I, I care about you. I know your parents are fighting. I know your parents are divorced. I know you're being abused. I care about you. This will this will help you. You know what I mean? He'll come in the voice somebody close to them, or he'll come sometimes as himself disguised, and he will begin to indulge them and get them to think that this is the way for them to get free of what's going on. And it really puts them in bondage more to the point where they're adults and we see them get raised up into these monsters. Yeah. You see them get raised up to the monsters that we see now, to the tools of the enemy that we see. And you know, the enemy don't play fair because Right. They're only a means to his end. So once he's done using them or they've turned on him or they start to see the truth and they don't call on the name of Jesus, he'll destroy him. He'll destroy right. him to protect his seat, his kingdom and his plan. Right. Just call me and the so, whistleblower today. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and all the more so for us as, as believers to let our light shine and, you know, preach yes. the truth of the cross, preach the truth of the blood of Jesus, preach the truth that they can be free in the name of Jesus, and they can be set free completely from the demonic mm -hmm. strongholds on their life. You know, we're seeing the, we're seeing how the enemy works. You just revealed a huge card of how he operates and how he works and how, now, how do we respond to that as believers? Well, if you're, so we'll do it from a couple categories here. If your parents, you're like a shepherd to this precious little lamb that God has given you. You have to protect this lamb. Now there's a difference between protecting and completely sheltering because you want to know, you want your children to know how to defend their faith in the world and stand against, you know, right. a temptation and, and, and recognize it as that from the enemy. And, and, and you know what I mean? You, Want, so you want them to be able to operate. You don't want them to be totally sheltered where you throw them out in the world and they immediately get devoured. You know what I mean? Right. But to protect their soul and their spirit, what they watch, what they hear, you know, what they're right. ready to understand and what they're not ready to understand. You know, yes. just because everyone else's kid is waving a wand with Harry Potter doesn't mean you make your kid do that because those are real spells in there. That's Those right. are real spells. That's a really cool way for the enemy to get children used to doing spells and indoctrinated into the occult. And so I can, you have I can to be you, I have two kids, young, six and nine. And we went to Target mm -hmm. not that long ago. And there is a toy on the shelf. It's a cauldron that comes with mm -hmm. a wand and a spell book. I, I, mean, yep. I, I brought my kids over and I said, you see this? This is witchcraft. This is from the devil. And I, t I tell my kids all of that stuff, but just, I want, sorry to interject. I just want to tell you that this is everywhere and we have to teach our kids yes. the truth of exactly what it is. Go ahead. Yes, we do. You have to be vigilant, but that's a great example. You have to be vigilant about this because the enemy makes it look really fun. He knows how to make things look fun. He's not yeah. this guy when he appears with two ugly horns and an ugly face and an ugly, he didn't lose his form when he fell. So he appears as a very jovial, fun, you know what I mean? This is the answer yes. to your problems, angel of light yes. type of type of individual. So that's the first thing. Parents, you have to be vigilant in this day and age. 
with your children, with how much they watch, with how much you have them uh, watching things on the phone and things like that. Let them go out and use their imagination. And so, and I would, I would go outside. Yes, I, I was a big tomboy. I could skateboard. I could do ollies. I could rollerblade. I played dodgeball, wow. football, you name it. I, you know what I mean? Uh, and so, and I loved that. And kids need to get out and do that more, you know? I yeah. think two things happen with children young. You either get them involved in all the Disney and, and all that other stuff, or you get them involved too young in competitive sports where, you know I'll what I mean? About that. You're breeding that competitiveness in them at a very, not a wanting to help others, but a competitiveness. And yes, if your child has a talent in it and you want to, you know, help them cultivate it, that's one thing, but breeding them very early, you know, to look at, you know, in a way, you know, everybody else, um, as the enemy. And yes, the enemy's out there, but I'm saying you're breeding them very early to be way too competitive in nature and way too flooded between schools and competitions where they don't have a normal childhood. Right. That's where they good. don't grow up to be well-adjusted adults. You know, that's, that's something you just have to be watchful of. That's all. You have to use wisdom and you have to be watchful of that. Um, on other fronts, you know, for us adults, we have a lot of information being thrown at us. We have a lot of, see, the enemy has infiltrated into the church and into the areas of even truth tellers and, and things of that nature. And he creates a lot of rabbit holes for people to go down. And the problem when you go down rabbit holes is it gets really dark down there. You lose all sense of discernment and everything looks the same. You can't yeah, tell what's what anymore because it's so dark down there. So you have to be careful as an adult what your windows here see and what your yes. ears hear because... It yes. goes into your soul. Your soul and your spirit are like a sponge. And so they yes. absorb a lot. And I know Kat Kerr says this too. You have to give your soul a bath. You have to give your soul a bath. But, uh, you know, that's what you have to do, seriously. But because we have so much thrown at us. And as adults, we have to limit what we indulge the flesh in. Because the flesh, you don't want the flesh so overpowering the spirit. Yes. You want the spirit so dominating good. the flesh and saying, uh-uh, yes. you're not going there. Or I know that I'm not watching this, Lord. I'm so, you know what I mean? Sometimes yes. you turn on something for a minute and someone says something awkward. I sh shut it off. Lord, I'm sorry. I know that was on there. And I shut it off immediately. And I yes. move on. Um, so sometimes good. you're watching a clip of something. And someone said something funky that you didn't think was going to be said in that clip. Uh, and we mm -hmm. have to be vigilant because between the news and social media, and radio and all of the Hollywood movies, we are bombarded. Yes. See, the enemy, his strategy is to bombard you where you lose your sense of discernment. So to bombard you with everything that enhances the flesh, grows the flesh, feeds the flesh. Yes. Yes. And Come we on. should be checking that where that is way, 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 way down here. And what we're feeding us ourselves from the Lord is way, way, way up here. What we're yes. feeding ourselves in the word, what was time with the Lord, what we're yes. doing to, to help others and to further the kingdom of God and, and, and to be the love of God to people and yes. to witness and to just walk in his ways. It doesn't mean you don't have fun. Let me tell you, my life is hilarious. I walk with the Lord and <laughs> no. my life is hilarious. No, your, your <laughs> life isn't exciting. <laughs> the people who yeah. are here tell me I'm a reality show. Because they're hysterical half the time at my reaction to what the animals are doing and what Chris is doing and what goes <laughs> on. My life is not boring by any imagination. But people have to redefine what they think fun is. There you go. You know what I mean? That's a good word. They have to yep. redefine it because the enemy will, will serve you a lot of things like the Golden Corral, a big buffet of what he says is fun. But ultimately... Some of it and a lot of it will lead to all kinds of evil. It will open up the gates. It will yes. it will take people deeper into things. It will, it will cause vices to happen in their life and snares yes. and strongholds. And then the you know then the enemy's got them and they're not a threat to him anymore. And that's ultimately what he wants. And a little bit of leaven ruins the whole lump. And the enemy is very he does it in small little doses. So even with my life, when I fell away from God, that's how he did it with me. It was oh you can have a beer. It's not a big deal. You're not hurting anybody. And it started with that to me. And then what it moved on to and progressed to was me getting drunk three, four nights a week with my friends doing whatever I wanted to, because that was like, you're saying fun. And that's what I thought mm -hmm. was fun, but really it was destroying my life. It was destroying my relationships. 
It was destroying my work. My, it was robbing me of finances. It was robbing me of my dignity, of my witness. And that's what it does. It's a little bit at a time. And let's talk about this for a second, because we're talking about kids with what they watch and what they see. And you were talking about how, you know, we go yeah. and go and um, encourage people and we be there for them. And now we know something's coming out called the metaverse, which is going to have these uh, goggles on your eyes. I have which... something to say about that too when you're done. Yes. Okay. No, go ahead. Let's talk about that. Now, I'm going to tell you something interesting they did that I don't even think they realized they did. Uh, Facebook and the rest of them, whoever did this, okay? Meta in Hebrew means dead. Oh, my God. It's the dead verse. They definitely didn't know that. Now, they have pronounced death upon themselves and what they've created. Amen. Meta means dead. Look it up in Hebrew. So the metaverse wow. is an area of death. Why, why is it an area of death? Because it doesn't grow. Wow. Meaning like what you're doing there, there's nothing being cultivated and grown in your life and fruit being produced. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, yes. and, and, and the Lord building something incredible. It's, it's the dead area. It's the dry place. And that's wow. what they've created. Because they're giving yes. people an alternate reality that really builds nothing in their life. It just helps them escape from dealing with the problems that, you know, they've got there, you know, if you, if you put it as a garden, right? Because we have a garden here. And you don't tend to your garden. You've got weeds growing everywhere trying to suffocate your plants and destroy the good crop. So what do you have to yeah. do? You got to put your gloves on. You got to roll up your sleeves. You got to go out there and you got to work and you got to weed your garden. And what happens with people is they don't want to weed the garden. They don't want to do the work. They either want to escape, you know, or, or self-medicate or have something else go on, or they want to try to fix somebody else's life when their life is a hot mess. Okay. I've seen yeah. that all the time. And so, and so they don't want to do the work and go into the garden and actually weed it and put in the work to fixing yeah. what has happened. The Lord will help you fix it if you're willing to put in the work with him to fix it and do yes. what he says. He is more than gracious to do that. Many people yes. don't want to put in the work. They well, don't. you can't weed a garden in the metaverse. <laughs> no, let's you just can't. say that. It's like it's not reality. reality. It's no, not it's reality. Not. And at we have to okay. So those of you who have teenagers or kids, this is mm -hmm. going to become what it is going to be pushed in schools and other kids are going to talk about this. Oh, come and meet me today after school in the metaverse. And and it's going to become where they want to do it because it it stimulates your flesh. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the enemy's ploy to stimulate your flesh and suppress your spirit. And we have to fight this and say, no, we have to stand up and say, no, we're not doing that. No, we're not being involved in that. Teach your kids about, no, you're not wasting your life doing that. We're going to be um, productive in this life. We're going to do what God's called us to do because God has called each and every one of you to have an important role and task in this earth. And I can tell you, your important role and task is not sitting in the metaverse all day. Hey, Chris. Hey. Hey, yep. Chris has made a cameo appearance. Oh, okay. hey. <laughs> Chris will tell you about that because Chris got into things when he was younger that he shouldn't have got into like my parents no, would have didn't. never allowed me to date him i'm saying this publicly they would have never ever allowed me to date him when he was younger so but he did it he he learned a hard lesson from that and he had to put in the work with the lord yeah I'm out of that and it is it is you know why he makes you put in so much work so you never do it again so you yeah. see this is what I had to go through to get out of this. And this is what God gave me because of it. And I am not going back there. He doesn't want you to look back to an about face and go back to the very wilderness. He has yes. just delivered you out of. And that's what's happening. You know, the, the enemy mm -hmm. more and more is trying to put people in the wilderness and just make them wander there. Yep. No growth. And, just wander. Yeah. And I have a really cool testimony from a dear friend of mine, Christina, who um, just came to tape at Sid Ross. And she was telling me she, the Lord brought her out of homelessness, addiction, um, uh, mm -hmm. suicidal thoughts. I mean, the Lord set her completely free. And she said, Kelsey, you would think that, oh, everyone wants the story of the Lord set me free and I didn't have to walk through anything hard. She goes, no, that's not the case. The Lord set me free and he dealt 
with every part of me that was given to the enemy. I had to walk through and get healed and be made whole in every place. And she goes, that was not an easy walk. And so I just want to minister a little bit out of that to people who are watching, because a lot lot of people think, oh, well, if the Lord, if I could just have a visitation from God, if God would just visit me and then everything would be completely right and everything would work out. And I can tell you that God will visit you, but then there's also God wanting to deal with your soul and God wanting to deal with those things that you've walked through. And it can be a process. Sometimes it can be a year. Sometimes it can be five years, 10 years where God's still pulling things up and out of you to heal you and to, to deal with those little things that are left from the old self life. We like to call it. It's true. And I'll tell you something. If you want to visit from God, you better buy a package of depends. Because it is something that is not, you know what I mean? For the faint of heart many times to let you God in his power, you know, it's a that's serious hilarious. thing. And, and sometimes, yes, he does do that because that's the way to get that person awake and to and to right. take them out of that place they're in. And he's got to go in and get them himself and, you know what I mean, and appear. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's just, it does, it takes a lot of work you see that what what is missing out of you know when people call the prosperity gospel right now, there's no gospel named prosperity they're, they're saying they're preaching it you know a certain way the part that's missing out of that is all the hard work you have to put in with the lord and the toil and and the testing and the refining yes. everything yes. you have to go through before he can trust you with Come what on. he's going to give you to steward. God has to trust yes. you that you are going to properly and appropriately handle his affairs that he is giving yes. you to watch over. And he's got to bring you through a lot of grueling stuff so you know your place and you know who he is. And you know yes. that without him, you would have never come out of that place and you would never have what you have. So he puts you through this grueling. I mean, I went through it for over 20 years. I mean, I grew up in a very dysfunctional right house as a child i mean the enemy could have gotten me right there and the lord had his hand on my life so that he didn't every which way he tried to cause chaos the lord sustained me and a lot of people go well where was god when i was a child he was there because you're still alive That's the enemy right. wanted to have you a long time ago and the lord sustained your life and you have to yes. look at it that way and he's giving you another chance as an adult to say I am getting off the spin cycle. I am coming out of those places of dysfunction. I am coming out of those habits. I am leaving that because it is not productive for what God wants to do in my life. You know, the Lord said to me a long time ago to tell everybody, your family is not worth your soul. Mm. Do not follow in the footsteps of things going on in your family that are wrong, that are un godly that are very dysfunctional at the cost of your soul and the plans God has for you because you want to continue those generational things it's not worth it yeah God has so much more for you than that and God wants to break those cycles in your family for future generations for your yeah. children he wants to break them you know why because that is a major door slammed shut in the face of the enemy that now he doesn't have that is one of his go-to you know, kid in a candy store areas that he goes to is through the family line and the people close to you that are around you. And yeah. so he said that to me a long time ago to get me to understand that dysfunction is not normal. And following in that dysfunction is just going to create more abnormalness. Yes. You know, God is God of order. He yes. likes order. He likes things in order. And so basically he wants you to veer from that. And it's not comfortable because it feels abnormal to us, but it's really normal. What God has for us many times doesn't feel right to us because we've mm -hmm. never known it. But yes. he wants to teach it and give it to us and retrain us to understand that yep. this is normal. And this is what he wants, although we're supposed to be a peculiar people. And I am the textbook edition of that. You know, as far as peculiar, my husband in the best way, in the best way, but it, and it's hard. And I mean, you know, you, you still have good days and you have bad days, and you know, we all fall short of the glory of God. Yeah, but when we, we keep persevering and pressing towards the mark of the high calling and continue yes. to do the work with the Lord and run the race, you see the most incredible things birth in your life that the Lord then uses to touch others and yes. to help others give to others. It's incredible the way he does it, but that's how he does it. 
Will you begin to pray? I just feel the Holy Spirit really moving on a lot of people. I feel a lot of hearts are opening um, right now. Would you begin to pray for those people who maybe are in that? They're in that time where they're walking with God through all of that mess, but God's with them in that. So would you pray for those people? He is with them in that. Okay, we're going to pray. Okay.